morning, good morning. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Can you indeed hear me? Testing, testing, one, two, three. Outstanding, outstanding. I hope everybody had a wonderful weekend and was able to get some rest and relaxation and all that good stuff. But now it's time to get down to business. We have a few things to go over, and uh, I'll make a few comments on what me think. All right, let's get this on and popping. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Pre-Market Poll Scan. Today is Monday, June the 12th, 2017. The time is 8.43 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Looking over to the left side of our screen, we have the bond futures right here at the top. As you can see, it's holding steady. It's at 153.30. Might as well just round that up and say 154. 154.05 and 154.07 is the high, and 05 is where we opened at. So we're staying within that range that I've been telling everyone about. As long as we're at this uh, 154, 155 level, no interest rate hike is in store for the foreseeable future. Looking at the Dow futures, down 15 points at 21.192. The NASDAQ 100 is down 38 and a half points at 57.09 and three quarters. The E-mini S&P only down three at 24.25 and a quarter. And the Nikkei is at 19,875, down 85. Crude oil is at 46 dollars and 57 and a half cents up 75 cents u.s dollar is at 97.16 so we got out of that 96 handle and gold is down two dollars and 90 cents at 12.68.50 and silver is off 17 cents at 17.04 and that gas is at 307 up about three cents so that's about what's going on right now. Not too much happening at the moment. So we'll constantly be watching to see what's safe. Uh, it looks like, is this correct? It looks like uh, BTSC is being called higher at 8 almost 19 cents on the open. Uh, that's pretty ferocious. You got to like that. Uh, Bitcoin and um, uh, I can't talk now. Your Tasium, how you say it, you know what I'm talking about. Um, they're doing they're doing amazing work right now. We're going to get into that as well. Um, what you're going to want to do is um, urethium. I said urethasium. <laughs> urethium, um, about 400 bucks right now, and your Bitcoin, about 3000 So what you're going to want to do is use today's pulse wave price triggers to um, trail your position and tighten up on your stops. So if it pulls back pretty hard, you don't lose all your gains and your profits. So I would definitely uh, take advantage of that, okay? So I just wanted to throw that out there to you. Um, same, you know, so with Ethereum and, um, I mean, I'm sorry, Ethereum, can't talk this morning. If Ethereum and Bitcoin, definitely use your post-wave price triggers to tighten up and lock in your profits along the way on that one. All right, you don't, you, you just don't want to uh, play yourself, okay? You don't want to play yourself. I can't stress that enough. You don't want to play yourself. All right. Um, let's see. Let's get into what we got going on here. I'm in the in play tab right now. Okay. Notables today. Uh, AutoZone has a rally alert. It is in a parabolic state to the downside with locked in momentum. Perhaps this uh, rally alert will play itself out, but not likely. 
So I wouldn't um, I wouldn't count on it. Anything is bound to happen. Um, let's see what else we got. Um, other notables. Let's see. OIH has a rally alert in it too. It's no longer in a parabolic state on the downside. It's just locked in. But that down that's downside trend is still strong. Um, if support is taken out today, that's going to trigger a uh, short sell, and we probably will get somewhere in the 22 handle. That's probably my initial target on that one. But it does have a rally alert. And if it can muster up the strength, which I doubt right now, um, you got a powerful uh, potential pulse wave setting up if, when, and if it can get going. So right now, I think all is just trying to find a bottom. And we'll have to see. And I'm sorry, this is not OIH. This is USO, I'm sorry. So t talking about USO, uh, actually both of them, USO and OIH. USO is more locked in. It's parabolic right now to the downside. It's just crashing. Uh, OIH is not as bad, but it's still, you know, the, both downtrends are powerful right now. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, switching over to crash alerts. All right, we have one swing trade alert on the um, aerospace defense ETF. Ticker XAR, all right. That one has a uh, swing trade possibility. To the downside, some kind of correction or pullback could be underway. Uh, let's see. We have a overbought scenario in the Aussie Aussie dollar ticker symbol FXA. All right. XIV. This is a very important one. It has a crash alert. XIV has a crash alert. All right, it's parabolic to the upside, locked in on the momentum, but we're starting to get crash alerts. There's a strong possibility the stock market could be topping out here. All right, XIV is the leader. If XIV is, you know, starts to crack, then the rest of them could follow suit. All right. So this this is something we're watching today. Another thing to note, U.S. Steel has another crash alert. I don't think U.S. Steel can take no more. It, it dropped from $40 a share to $20 a share, and now here we are for another crash alert. Uh, it's been in a corrective play. All right, we've been um, trying to bounce off the lows and not getting much of a bounce. And now we have a crash alert, so chances are, this is going to be used as an opportunity to beat the shares down a little bit more and possibly bring this stock to the teens. Advanced micro devices. I got the heck out of Dodge. Um, I posted that in the trading room last week. I got the heck out. I said, forget it. I'm out until this thing is ready to turn. Well, we have a crash alert today. You do have some upside positioning on the momentum side of the argument, but the price action has been moving funny. So this is one to watch. Is it going to take another hit or is it ready to reverse? I don't think we're going to get a reversal today, but it's definitely something to watch. That crash alert, we can't ignore. Dry ships can't take no more either. Has a crash alert. Just waiting for it to turn, folks. All right. Uh, let's see here. D gas has a crash alert. So that, if it plays out, should mean uh, be a sign that the natural gas is ready to try to move higher again. It seems like it's just been stuck in the mud. Uh, the biotech ETF XBI has a crash alert. SHOP, S-H-O-P, has a crash alert. The NASDAQ 100, QQQ, has a crash alert. The positioning of this stock is no longer in a parabolic state. It's in a locked-in bullish state. But it's showing signs of losing 
the powerful thrust that it had behind it. This is definitely one to watch. All right, because the NASDAQ started correcting itself on Friday. All right, now, even though it, it was down like 150 points, uh, traditionally, just to let you know, doing some comparative analysis and looking at the historical norms, a 150-point move in the NASDAQ 100 is considered major. That's considered just unbelievable. Back in the 90s, it had an average daily range of 200 points. Yes, you heard me right. That was the average daily range. And the NASDAQ 100 futures contract was 200 points. And sometimes you would see several 200-point swings several times throughout the day. Yes, the NASDAQ 100 futures would have several 200-point price swings throughout the day. All right, that was the nature of the beast back then. So to see a 150-point move in the NASDAQ futures on a Friday was kind of a big deal. When, we, when the average movement has been 30 to 40 points, now we're three times as much on the move. And yeah, I think that was all done by Apple, but even still, one stock shouldn't move an entire index so much. So it lets you know about the flaws of how these uh, indexes are being put together, all right? Just throwing some stuff out there for you. NVIDIA has a crash alert. I am all over this NVIDIA. It did correct on Friday. It rallied like 8 $9 and then fell back like $11. So it's a big deal, all right? That, that's kind of a big deal. It's no longer parabolic. It's also just locked in. So it looks like we could see some selling. All right, Knickknack Paddywag, give the dog a bone. NAK has a crash alert in it. Uh, but I'm liking this one to the upside. So even if we have an intraday pullback, I don't know if it's going to be significant enough on this one. I'm still watching. I'm liking that knack. We go from knack to hack. Hack has a crash alert. In the natural realm, this crash alert and hack is a breath of fresh air. You want to keep that hack below $30 a share. If we, if this crash alert does not follow through, we're in trouble. We are in trouble. Waiting for the next shoe to drop, and this one could be enormous. All right? The ramifications on this ticker symbol has global ramifications to it. Um, yeah, it puts money in your pocket if you're long the stock, but what the stock means is a leading indicator of cyber terrorism and other situations associated with it or devastating. If this thing reaches and close above 32, let's say 32, $33 a share, then the next attack is imminent. I just want to let you know that. All right? Right now, we're on guard between 30 and $31 a share. But once we close above $32, $33 a share, the next attack is imminent, and it could be extremely nasty and have other things attached to it. It's just a way of the world, the way of the beast right now. Facebook has a crash alert as well. And so, therefore, my picks for today to sell short would be U.S. Steel, the QQQ, NVIDIA, and Facebook. Those would be on my list that I'll be looking for to do some operations. Now, remember, this is the daily um, looking looking at daily bars and not on the weekly tab. This is the in play tab that operates off the daily bars. So that's kind of what I'm looking at with this. Uh, I wouldn't be looking to uh, short anything else just yet, only because these that I just mentioned have the best potential for downside payout because they moved 
um, the best. They move the most. And when you see situations like that uh, evolve, you're definitely going to want to take advantage of it. So once again, um, sell short candidates for today would be Facebook, NVIDIA, QQQ, ShopX, and XIV. These are the sell short targets for today. All right. So I'm going to be watching those. If they trigger, then you guys know what we're going to do. All right. So no questions. I just posted both of these in the trading room as well. All right. Uh, let's see what else I want to look at. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go to your weekly tab now. And we're going to look at it from the week perspective. What can we take a look at? All right. Someone asked me in the trading room here in the chat part, uh, can I take a look at silver? My response to that is no. What do you think this is? A pre-market pulse scan or something? <laughs> a little corny humor. Of course, I'll look at silver for you. Uh, let's see. Uh, silver right now, since we're on the weekly, do you want the weekly or you want the daily first? Does it matter? All right, I'll give you the weekly first since we're on the weekly. Okay. Right now, we do have a crash alert. Uh, somebody said monthly. Oh, that was funny. I don't fool with no monthly. Um, but the weekly will do for you. Uh, you got a crash alert on your um, on your silver futures, okay? We're no longer uh, parabolic on the downside. We're just strong downtrend, locked in. We do have a crash alert, but we also have some type of positive momentum. All right, now it's, I didn't pick up if it was, I didn't pick up any like institutional um, operations or high frequency on Friday. I only picked up just there were some liquidation, some profit taking, if you will, but it was small. It wasn't really big in the grand scheme of things. Okay. So on the weekly, what does that leave us? Well, I think more downside is coming. I think this crash alert is going to play out in silver. I think it's really going to play out because if you look at where the post wave price trigger is on this weekly, we are far removed from the market. So the market has not fulfilled its downside. Also, on your uh, stop runner, you see that the stop runner, uh, the price is a little off. It's not coinciding with the post wave price trigger, but it should be reading. It should be telling you that the stops are going to be ran in the silver to the downside today. I'll be working on correcting that for you. But yes, it's telling you to look for the stops, the sell stops to get run, not the buy stops. All right. Stop runner is calling for sell stops and silver to be hit today. All right. That's where your crash alert is. So once again, sell stops and silver are in jeopardy. And so are the sell stops and gold futures. Gold futures and silver futures, the sell stops are in jeopardy. I have an alert saying look out for those sell stops to be ran and intraday supports to be taken out. All right. So it hasn't happened yet, but that's what the system is calling for. All right. Let's see what else here in our weekly tab, which is very important. Uh, let's go with the crash alerts first on this one because there are many. Let's see what kind of notables we got. I know we got some notables here. Let's see which one is. Let's see. Just gonna pick something out. I did my um my in play tab first because that's the one I operate under. But all right, here's one that eluded me. Water. Um, WTR has a um, crash alert on it. I didn't see that one before, so I'll have to make a note to make sure that's in the in play tab. It should be. So that's WTR that has one. And let's see what else. All right, I told you about Facebook already. Uh, Netflix has has a crash alert on it too. Looks like the tech sector is just really looking to get to take it on the chin some more. I don't think we're done with the downside. Now this is interesting. 
on the financials, ticker symbol FAZ. FAZ has a crash alert, which means that FAS has a um, <clears throat> chance to rally some more. So the financials have a, have a chance to, to get a bounce here. But with that being said, uh, hold, hold on one second. Okay, I apologize for that. Where were we? Oh yeah, fast. Okay, so financial sector could catch a bounce here. And with that being said, let's take a look at a couple of those real quick. I've been wanting to look at Goldman Sachs. Okay, Goldman Sachs has a rally alert. So this further backs up what I was looking at and the FAZ. So we do have a situation where the longer term positioning of this stock is bullish somewhat, but it's a weak bull pattern. It's been basically falling off of that. So we are, we're now locked in to corrective mode from the highs in Goldman Sachs. Don't have a crash alert, we have a rally alert, but just the nature of how this is poised, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking Goldman Sachs is going to have the rally alert play out only to set up for a major drop, a major sell-off. Let's look at the chart. Let's consult the charts here. Consult the chart. Yep, there you go. The system is clever. It knows. All right, let's take a look at what the charts are showing us. We're bumping up against resistance up here. Around the 223 level is resistance. All right, and it's the if you can break it, it gets you into the bottom of the Kumo cloud. I think we're going to just come up here, and it's going to. I think all these rallies are going to be sold. I think all rallies are being sold. That's what the system's been telling us. All right. We sold here. 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 Pattern repeating itself. All right. Pattern repeating itself. Now, in this one, because we have a rally alert, I think it's going to push through this time, play around, but it's going to be sold off again. All right, so this is what I'm looking in the Goldman Sachs. I think the Goldman Sachs is definitely going to trigger that. Could I be wrong? Of course, but I don't think I'm wrong this time. I think this is what's happening. Rinse and repeat. So I'm going to add Goldman Sachs to the list for possible short candidates. All right, let's see what else we got here of note. Uh, J.P. Morgan. Let's look at J.P. Morgan. Let's see here. Because I've been wanting to look at J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs and them guys. Okay, here we go. J.P. Morgan also has a rally alert. The position on this one is different. It's been in a corrective phase off the highs already. And we have that corrective state locked in. And I'm picking up high frequency activity on the short side as well. So let's pull up JP Morgan. I sense the chart is going to look similar. Let's see. All right, this is what I'm seeing that's gonna happen with the Goldman Sachs. The only difference is this one is further away from the Kumo cloud as Goldman Sachs is closer to the Kumo cloud. The trend lines are already like, basically already in the Kumo cloud. This one had air pockets. So this one's probably closer to selling off than Goldman Sachs. See, we sold here, we sold here, setting up for the sell here. All things being equal, everyone sees that. All right, let me just highlight it for you if you 
don't really get it or you can't really see it out there and and I have shaky hands but so it's not going to be perfect but this is what we're looking at okay kind of like this all right so the downtrend channel is intact all right so I see us going from where we are now at least back down to here somewhere all right and maybe even possibly way down up in here somewhere all right and that would make sense because we then we have a new leg so really you could fan you could extend these all the way out you know and this would come to the bottom of the Kumo cloud and see what I'm saying? It just keeps going down, 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 down. So this puts us up into maybe the 60s or even the 50s, depending on how much momentum we gather to the downside. Is that is that starting to make sense? So I'm going to have to add JP Morgan to this short list as well. Might be time to short the financials, folks. You know, this is, it is what it is. So this is what we're looking at. All right, and now let's look at some of the banks. I want to look at what the banks were doing too. Uh, let's see. Uh, the one I'm particularly looking at is Bank of America. All right, Bank of America looks just like JP Morgan. It's in a corrective state off the highs and it's starting to lock into the downside, but it has a rally alert in it. All right, let's take a look at Bank of America, which chart is should be similar to this one. Yes, it is. Well, what do you know? Consistent, looking just like J.P. Morgan's chart. Can't make this stuff up. It is what it is. All right, so we'll add Bank of America to the list as well. The list seems to be expanding. The financial sector seems to be where everything is at today. All right. So with that being said, I think that's all I got for now. We have our marching orders on this one. Uh, I will take questions right now. Does anyone want me to look at anything in particular? Anybody. If not, we'll go ahead and wrap it up and just give us time to get our, um, um, our tickets in. We good? All right. Well, pre-market pulse scan is a wrap. If no one has any questions, yeah, I think the I think banks are about to crash. I, I really do. Um, and I don't know if I would use the word crash. I would say correct. Another, or better yet, in trader talk, I think that the sell side of the financial sector is in play to pay us. <laughs> How about that? That's a better way to say it. The sell side is in play and ready to pay us <laughs> in the banks. Um, and I do think that there is some correction coming, possibly in the metals. Um, oh, that's what we did. We didn't look at um, GDX, the the miners. I'm sorry. Let's let's do that real quick. I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't do that. Okay, GDX is flatlined right now. Uh, we have a two in the uptrend and a five in the downtrend. So that means that the uptrend has topped out, and that the downtrend is now taking lead. And we have an eleven under our negative momentum, which means that we are locked into that downside right now. We got 39 in the positive momentum column, which means that the institutional folk are doing, they, they've been operating, they're doing something. I think they're setting up not to break out, not to rally, but they were using the um, the little potential uptick we saw as, a, as an opportunity to sell more. Uh, let's look at the chart. G, D, X, J, boom. Let's blow this up. All right, so basically, let me erase these lines. 
And you can see here, we've come down. The rallies are being sold. This one's no different. It's falling under the, it's, it's following the Kumo cloud perfectly. Let me highlight that. Let me show you that. How the price action is following the Kumo cloud trajectory perfectly. So we should be coming down to here. This is where we're going. This is this is where we're headed, right? It's following the Kumo cloud perfectly. So that puts us down into here. That puts us down below the thirty-one dollars a share. So yeah, I think that's where we're going. It's having trouble up here, and this is where it look, it's looking to get sold at. All right. So there you have it, folks. Let's see. Someone said once Bitcoin breaks three thousand. BTSC should follow. Yeah. Yes. I am still long and strong to BTSC and looking to get longer. Um, I'm looking to operate in this market in a big way, but I'm going to trade it. All right. I'm going to follow strict rules on it. I'm going to trade it. And make sure that it pays me correctly. The only downside with the Bitcoin space, as far as on the equity side, is that you don't have no pre-market stuff. You know what I'm saying? You don't really have no pre-market action like the rest of the stock. So you almost, it's almost like potluck. You don't know what you're gonna get until it happens. Does that make sense? So, you know, like some of these other stocks, you know, they open way early. And we can trade and get in there and do what we want to do. And this one is not like that. Okay, it's just not like that. Um, it is what it is. It's showing stuff in the pre-market per se, but you can't. It won't let you trade it. It won't let you do anything until 930, which kind of sucks. But it is what it is. Um. So with that being said, remember bulls make money, bears make money, and pigs get slaughtered. So remember to take what you can and give nothing back. Trading room, I'll see you guys over there in a few minutes after I process this video uploaded to YouTube. And um, the rest of you guys, come on over to postwavetrading.com so you can learn how to trade these markets. Learn what the central banks that want you to know. Learn how to make money in Bitcoin and ethereum and how to hedge your gold and silver know when to buy and when to sell that is the most important thing and you will learn that at postwavetrading.com also to everyone who has not already done so you want to register at the site so you can be kept up to date on the latest breaking things that are going on here at postwave trading um, i highly encourage everyone to do that especially all of you who are premium um, subscribers? You should be subscribed to my Twitter, and you should be you should be following me on Twitter, and also subscribe to the website also, because that is our backup to let you not guys know what's going on, what have you. And everyone should have the link here to the um, to the live uh, feed that we do, so that you can be kept abreast of what's going on as well. All right, I will see everybody later. Peace out.